Shalom, I'm Alex Lederman and welcome to Israel Policy Pause. It's been a very eventful week in the Israeli political arena in the lead up to tomorrow's deadline for parties to submit their final list of candidates. From the unmourned death of Ayala Shaked and Yoaz Hendel's Zionist spirit party to the unsuccessful bid by Prime Minister Lapid to secure a merger agreement between Labour and Meretz. I think that one of the most significant political developments of the week came out of the Haredi sector. The Ashkenazi Haredi party united toward Judaism will indeed remain united in the election despite speculation that it was going to split. Recall that this party is actually made up of two distinct factions. There's Agudat Israel, the Hasidic faction led by Yitzhak Goldnop, and Degala Torah, the Lithuanian faction led by Moshe Gaffney. These two parties have run together under the name United Towards Judaism since 1992, and a few days ago it was looking like they were going to divorce. The dispute was reportedly over the issue of funding for the schools of the Bells Hasidic sect, who are represented by Agudat Israel. The Bells Hasidim were looking to implement more of Israel's core curriculum into their schools in an effort to secure more government funding. Degala Torah objected to this because they were worried that it could bring more government supervision to their schools, which obviously they don't want, and also impact their school system's funding. There was also a personal dispute between Gaffney and Goldnopf over who would get to lead the list. Opposition leader Benjamin Netanyahu came in and brokered a deal stipulating that if he returns to the premiership, he will ensure that all Haredi schools will get government funding, regardless of whether they teach the core curriculum. Gaffney will get to keep the party's top spot, and uh, Agudat Israel will fill the majority of its Knesset seats. This is a great deal for all involved. It's a great deal for both factions who get everything that they want and ensure that they both make it to the Knesset. And it increases Benjamin Netanyahu's odds of forming the next government, given that all of his bloc will make it into the Knesset. And it will also secure the Haredi party's loyalty as the dust settles after November 1st. The losers of this deal are the next generation of Haredim, who uh, could be denied even more than they already are an education that provides them with basic subjects like English and math and science and prepares them for the real world. And of course, the Israeli taxpayer, who will have to foot the bill for uh, schools that don't even meet the government's own standards for providing the most basic level of education. That's it for this week's Israel Policy Pause. Until next week, yalla bye.